Okay, this is now the five minute tarot for the 12th of April 2017. And this is a slightly different setup today. I've got a different camera I'm using. Okay, so today is going to be about how, about people, well, it's going to be about combining numerology and or astrology and or the tarot because a lot of people want to do this they th they say that uh, if you want to learn the tarot then it's a good idea to know some numerology and or to know some astrology and I don't think it's a good idea I think if you're going to do numerology do numerology and keep it separate if you're going to do astrology you do you look at horoscopes and keep them separate if you're going to do the tarot you keep it separate as well and I don't think you can really use one to help the other. I, I give you an example. When I was 14, I had this friend, she called Ian Leonard. And we had to, at one point, translate some French into English. And I forget the sentence, but I mean, I remember part of it. And it had to do with, uh, it was as if there were people having a discussion and somebody said, it's a bad idea. And then somebody said, but... Actually, it's a good idea. So he said, mais en effet, c'est une bonne idée. And I translated it as, but in, if, in fact, it's a good idea. And the teacher took marks off because he said, all I did was translate word for word what the French was. Mais, but en effet, in fact, c'est une bonne idée, it's a good idea. But when I, when I read back my translation, I emphasized in fact, so I was, I, the way I read it to myself was, but in fact, it's a good idea. So the, 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 when, when you read something, there's always a voice in your head that reads it a certain way and you can see or you can, you can have emphasis in your own mind as you read it that maybe isn't there on the page. So, because Ian Leonard wanted me to wanted people to say, but actually, it's a good idea, or but by contrast, it's a good idea. But he thought that me saying in effect, in fact, wasn't a, a correct translation. So you you can think you're translating well with numerology and astrology in the tarot, but maybe you're not because you can have you can have problems that you don't really foresee because you're. You've got the voice in your own head that's translating it one way and giving a certain emphasis, a certain meaning that maybe doesn't apply or isn't automatically going to work for something else. So I looked up, I, I googled numerology, the number two, I think it was. And so I, I read in a couple of numerology sites that the number two and the two is the high priestess. So presumably... You look at the high priestess and you're not quite sure what to say. So you think, okay, I'll say something about the number two. So the, with the number two, it's supposed to be loving and gentle when it's in good form. But it can also be cruel and vengeful. So this numerology site said, but somehow I can't, I can't imagine. Okay, there's two things to say about that. One is that every number can be cruel and vengeful. I don't think being cruel connects with or is a characteristic only of the high or the number two or the high priestess. And the other thing is, do you think honestly that the high priestess can be cruel or is by nature cruel and vengeful? I can understand she can be disappointed or upset or hurt or misunderstood, but I don't think she's going to react to a difficult situation by being cruel and being vengeful. I just don't see it. So I think you, you're, if you, if by all means say the high priestess is number two, but if you start trying to bring in the number two, or the, the symbolism or the meaning of the number two and relate it to the high priestess, it doesn't always work. And the other thing is if you, let's say you want to bring in some astrology. So, um, in a horoscope, the moon represents the past, it represents your the mental personality, how you think and habits and so on. But the moon in a horoscope reflects, she has no light of her own, so she reflects the light of the sun. So let's say you've got the moon in Pisces. The moon in Pisces has, behaves differently 
if she's reflecting the sun in Taurus, because the moon reflects the sun. So she, the moon in Pisces with the sun in Taurus is, is, is one set of circumstances, one type of behavior, or a certain way of dealing with things. But the moon in Pisces, even if it's the same degree, if it's reflecting the sun in, um, in uh, Aquarius, that's a very different moon in Pisces. So if you take the number two as the moon, if you say the high priestess is the moon, you're leaving out an awful lot that you would not naturally have or that you would naturally be thinking about or incorporating if you were looking at the moon in a natal horoscope. So yes, you can say the number two is the moon and the high priestess is there for the moon, but you're leaving out a lot and you can be completely off track because you're leaving out so much. So some people like to look at, or they say that if you, if you want to learn the tarot and you know some numerology and or some astrology, you can combine them or blend them, or you can use understanding in one area to uh, increase your understanding of the tarot. Uh, I don't think you can. And it's a mistake. So if you're going to look at the tarot, look at the tarot. If you're going to look at astrology, by all means look at astrology, but develop an understanding of astrology rather than try to use it, use astrology or use numbers to increase your ability to read cards. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Okay. If you have comments, leave them down below. Or if you have questions, again, leave them down below or send me an email. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.